In the spring of 1963, two girls, June and Jennifer Gibbons, were born in a military hospital in Aden, identical as two drops of water to each other. Soon, they would come to be known as the Silent Twins. Their birth was nothing out of the ordinary, but their further upbringing was vastly different from that of other children. Only the premature demise of one sister would eventually put everything in its place. Hello, you are at the NSK Show Channel. And believe me, today you're going to hear a really interesting and twisted story. Who were the twin sisters? As the girls grew a bit after their birth, their parents Gloria and Aubrey eagerly awaited when their little ones would finally start to talk. However, as time passed, nothing happened, and their speech skills did not develop. Indeed, the girls were so inseparable that it sometimes seemed as though they communicated with each other in their own language, exclusively interacting with one another, showing no interest in the outside world. Their father even recalled in an interview that, at home, the daughters made some sounds, but it was extremely difficult to call it speech. Naturally, such unusual children attracted a lot of attention from their peers in elementary school, who did not miss the opportunity to tease them. This, by the way, influenced June and Jennifer to become even more dependent on each other. Their childhood was a challenging period. By the time the girls reached adolescence, their language had become incomprehensible to everyone else. The sisters did not want to interact with anyone around them. They could not be forced to read or write, go to school, they just mimicked each other's actions. Many years would pass before June would describe the dynamics of the relationship with her twin sister in something like the following way. One day, she woke up being me, and I became her. We often told each other the phrase, give me back myself. If you give me back myself, then I will give you back to you. Obsessed with her sister. When the time came for another checkup of the twins in 1974, their doctor John Reese noticed the sisters' strange behavior, more precisely, their body's reaction to vaccination. He considered their behavior, so to say, puppet-like, and reported this to the school administration. When Reese realized that the principal was not going to take any steps, he turned to a child psychologist with a request for psychotherapy. However, all attempts to conduct a consultation ended negatively. The girls still did not want to speak to anyone. In 1977, speech therapist Anne Traherne took on the case of the sisters, but Jennifer and June still refused to speak in the presence of anyone. Then, the woman found a way to the girls and agreed with them that they would record their dialogue provided they were left alone. Why so? Because Traherne had a strange feeling that June wanted to talk to the specialist, but Jennifer would not allow her to do so. The speech therapist even noticed that the second girl had an expressionless gaze, yet it was full of force. Then Treherne understood that June was obsessed with her own sister. It was decided for their own good to separate the twins and send them to two different boarding schools. But even such an experiment could not positively influence the girls' interaction with the outside world. The Gibbon sisters completely withdrew into themselves and almost fell into a catatonic state. Once, June had to be physically pulled out of bed as her body was incredibly heavy and completely immobile. When Jennifer and June were reunited, they became even more immersed in each other, distancing themselves from the entire world and even their parents. Over time, the silent twins developed an interest in creative writing. At the age of 16, they enrolled in correspondence writing courses, publishing stories through a self-funded publishing house. Perhaps it might have seemed like the first step toward a normal life, but it was far from that. The sisters' stories were no less peculiar and unsettling than their behavior. After their novel titled, Dependent on Pepsi-Cola was published, June and Jennifer decided to explore the world. Within two years, they tried drugs and alcohol for the first time, and soon began committing petty crimes. In 1981, they faced their first arrest for arson. A couple of years later, the Gibbon sisters ended up in a high-security hospital for mentally ill offenders. Secret Agreement In the hospital, life was extremely challenging for the twins. Here, they were not allowed to immerse themselves in their own world as they did back home. Doctors started feeding the sisters high doses of antipsychotic medications, significantly impairing their vision. June and Jennifer spent 12 years in the hospital. The only thing that gave them a sense of purpose was maintaining a diary. One of the sisters even made this entry. We were tormented for 12 years just because we didn't talk. We had to make a lot of effort to get out of there. And when they finally forced us to start talking, 
the head doctor said we needed to stay here for a whopping 30 years. After some time, in 1993, June and Jennifer were transferred to a clinic with lower security levels. However, it was precisely there that medical professionals discovered that Jennifer showed no response to external stimuli at all. Everyone thought she had fallen into an unresponsive sleep, but she had actually passed away. Her diagnosis was inflammation of the heart at the age of 29. Of course, such a tragic event shocked everyone. However, what happened next was even more astonishing. It is difficult to describe in words, but June suddenly started communicating with everyone as if she had been doing it all her life. After some time, she was even discharged from the clinic, and the girl began to live a completely ordinary life. Now she no longer wanted to remain silent. How did the story of the silent twins come to light? Surely you want to know who studied the lives of the girls if they remained silent twins for a long time. This person was Marjorie Wallace, a journalist from a London newspaper, who once heard the story of these sisters and wanted to learn much more about their lives. Contacting the parents of the mysterious girls, she gradually began to explore the world of June and Jennifer. One day, she read several of their works in the room and was truly impressed. Marjorie couldn't understand how, in the absence of a normal, real life, one could have such a vivid, imaginative existence. The genuine interest in the talent of the sisters evidently influenced them to start trusting Wallace. They would occasionally even converse with her. As the journalist later recalled in an interview, the twins desperately wanted their works to be recognized. I thought that perhaps the only way to free them was to break the chains of silence. When June and Jennifer were in the psychiatric hospital, the woman did not cease to visit them. Over time, she delved deeper into their world, saying, I love spending time with the girls. They have a very unusual and strange sense of humor. Studying the sisters' diaries, Marjorie realized that Jennifer was simply obsessed with her sister, even calling her the Black Shadow. On the contrary, June spoke of her twin as the face of suffering, deceit, and doom. Diving even further into the diaries, Marjorie understood that the girls despised each other and even feared one another. While interacting with the silent twins, the journalist clearly noticed June's strong desire to distance herself from the dominating Jennifer. From two to one. But why did Jennifer leave life so early and in such circumstances? The reason lies in the fact that sometime before moving to the new clinic, Marjorie came to visit the sisters again, and an extremely unusual conversation ensued. Jennifer simply stated that she would die soon. However, the journalist did not want to believe her ears, as the physical health of the twins was quite robust. Then Jennifer firmly stated, because we decided so. At that moment, Wallace felt as if the sisters had decided that one of them had to leave this world so that the other could breathe freely. Having warned the doctors about this, the woman went home. But the irreversible happened the next morning. Before leaving for the new clinic, Jennifer sat next to her sister, rested her head on June's shoulder, and heavily exhaled, saying, Finally, we will be free. Literally a minute later, she fell into a coma, and after 12 hours, she passed away. Doctors, of course, tried everything to save her life, but nothing helped. June was left in this world without a piece of her own. The official cause of the incident, as stated by doctors, was a large tumor around the girl's heart. However, Jennifer's death remains shrouded in mystery and confusion. By the way, she did not take any sedatives or poison. Doctors believe that it was the medicinal drugs previously administered to the sisters that triggered the immune system of the deceased to her tragic death. In principle, it's possible. But then why didn't June encounter similar problems? After all, she took the same pills in the same high doses. When the girl was left alone, she wrote in her diary, Today, my beloved sister, my twin Jennifer, has passed away. She is no longer with me. She will never see me again. Our parents came to say goodbye to her, and I touched her cold forehead with my lips for the last time. I wanted to fall into hysteria from such terrible grief. After all these events, Marjorie came to visit the surviving sister. And it must be admitted, she found her in excellent spirits. Not only that, but they also talked fully and very heartily for the first time, which is also important. After Jennifer's death, June seemed to blossom and appeared to be an entirely different person. In a way, it was a kind of liberation. Many years have passed, but June has managed to live a normal life alongside her family. 
Now she is ready to talk to anyone who wants and is ready to listen. When asked why she remained silent for 30 years, she told an incredibly shocking story. We made a pact. We decided that we would not talk to anyone. We stopped talking altogether and did it only when we were alone. Indeed, the story of these twins is astonishing. And despite the sad outcome for one of the sisters, it is still heartening that the other managed to experience the joys of life and find her true path. Well, that's all for today. Don't forget to like this video and of course, subscribe to the channel. Thank you all for watching. Goodbye.